Hi, I am so glad you joined me for today's video segment. We're going to begin working on a series of videos that cover equilibrium. Um, I think kind of a central part of analytical chemistry and second semester general chemistry. So I want to talk first about reactions. And there are three broad questions that we can ask of chemical reactions. The first one is, will it go? When I'm talking about that, I'm talking about favorability. Is a reaction favorable under given um, temperature conditions? Will it proceed to make a significant amount of products without any other barriers in place? We always have to meet the activation energy, a little spark to get it going, but once it gets going, will it proceed to make a significant amount of product? And that is a question that will be answered in thermodynamics and thermochemistry. I, my video series will combine those two. So we will talk about those, that's, can't quite read that, but we will talk about those in thermo. Okay, um, the next question is how far will a reaction go? Um, if you're studying equilibrium right now, you have likely studied stoichiometry. Stoichiometry covers reactions that proceed 100% to make product, or effectively 100% to make product. Um, and then there are others that we're going to be talking about and introducing now. That's an equilibrium. An equilibrium is a reversible reaction. Um, reactions under equilibrium are reversible and do not proceed 100% to make products. And we'll spend significant time talking about that. And the other is how fast will it go? And that is a question that is covered typically in a unit on rates and kinetics. Okay, so reactions, we're going to zero in on this part of the how far will it go. Um, reactions in this case are reversible. Um, you may have seen this before. You would see some sort of a double arrow. Those double arrows can be written. It depends on how readily the person can find the right fonts. You might see two full arrows going back and forth, one arrow or half arrows um, like that. And those all indicate a reversible reaction. Now, the concept of percent completion is not always helpful. Uh, it, it's still used and, and it will still be calculated, but unfortunately cannot always be tabulated so that we as scientists can compare our work and communicate with one another. And the reason is, is it is often dependent upon initial conditions. So our ideal would be to talk about some sort of a constant that we can communicate with that varies, and it will, we'll see varies based on temperature, but at least if we state the temperature, we have a way to compare our work, okay? Um, now, in kind of marketing terms, uh, we want to compare relative, or if we want to talk about stoichiometrically speaking, our relative amounts of reactants and products. And when we make that comparison, scientists have come up with what they call the reaction quotient. This is such an important part of our conversation. I, I put a K there because I'm thinking equilibrium there. But it's an important part of our conversation about equilibrium. It's great evaluative tool. Unfortunately, we are not yet at that point <coughs> where we can talk about a constant that can be compared from one reaction to another. But we're getting close. So let's continue on. This reaction quotient that scientists have developed is Q. And if I have some generalized balanced equation here, what scientists have chosen to do is to define it as products in a numerator and reactants in the denominator. 
And notice that this is all multiplication and division. We're not going to be doing subtraction and addition for these uh, reaction quotients. It's all multiplication and powers. Now, another thing I want you to notice is that unlike kinetics, we are taking our powers directly from our balancing coefficients. We're not going to need data to determine those powers. So you notice that power comes directly from the balancing coefficient. The brackets, hopefully you know by now that brackets mean molarity, moles per liter. And you would either see moles per liter or partial pressures. And I'll give you a heads up. If the question is asking about partial pressures, uh, a reaction and all the data is in partial pressure, and you use brackets indicating molarity, you have not effectively communicated, and you will get um, points taken off. So Q will find this reaction quotient is going to change over the course of a reaction. So if we started with reactants, all reactants and no products, over time we're going to lose reactant. And as reactant is colliding and forming product, we're going to see an increase in our product molarity. And very quickly, all this place, you notice that that ratio is changing over time. But at some point, we reach a point where the slope is zero. And so if concentration per time is my slope and that's my rate, that means that things appear to have stopped. The slope is zero. There's no change over time. And so if you were looking at this at a macroscopic level, there would be no apparent change. In reactants and products, if we were looking at our visual macroscopic level, uh, in other words, colors would uh, reach a stable point and quit changing. But what we find is on the macroscopic level, this is still dynamic. There is still good stuff going on. Um, reactant is still proceeding to make product, but because it's reversible, product is beginning to form reactant. And Q becomes a constant, K. And that's what we call the equilibrium constant. So in this whole region over here, if we were to be performing calculations of products over reactants, we would be calculating Q, and it would vary with molarities um, as, or as time went on. But once we reach this point here, where it appears to have stopped, we now can tabulate a constant called K. Now that K is, K is a function of temperature. And so often you will see temperature reported. You won't use it in your calculation, but it will be reported. And at that point, what we find is that the rate forward is equal to the rate reverse. So K forward is equal to K reverse. And I need a little bit more room to show you this. So my rate in the forward direction is equal to my rate in the reverse direction. So it appears to have stopped. And what we find is that equilibrium constant K, which we'll talk a lot about in terms of molarity, but this is something you really want to wrap your mind around and memorize, is it's the rate constant for the forward direction divided by the rate constant for the reverse direction. 
I'm not going to spend any time um, showing you that derivation. Um, but if you're in my class, you can come in and I'll show you that derivation if you want. In the meantime, it's just something you, you'll want to accept and not only accept, but embrace, aka memorize that sucker. Okay? All right, next time we're going to spend a little bit more time discussing that equilibrium constant. But we're not going to leave Q behind. Q is going to walk with us through this whole journey. So thanks for joining me.